Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. This is Carly. Um, today is a Sunday and it's fall and um, I'm thinking that a roast chicken dinner is the way to go tonight. So I'm going to feature um, some of our stoneware. This is our large covered baker. Um, you can see that the lid comes off. Um, this is a glazed exterior. Um, I think mine is a different color. I got it kind of like it as a special uh, color, um, but it's, based, it's the same product. And then you have unglazed stoneware here on the inside and again, the glazed on the outside. So this is really a beautiful piece of stoneware. It's very heavy. Um, it roasts, uh, I've made green bean casserole in this, um, you know, when we're cooking for a crowd. Um, this is great to warm mashed potatoes, uh, roast vegetables, if you're doing, you know, squash or whatever you happen to be doing. Um, and some of the recipes you'll have the lid on and some of the recipes obviously you'll be um, using or not using the lid. Um, today I will be doing a roast chicken so I'm going to go ahead all I'm going to do is uh, rinse off the chicken and pat it dry and put it right in here and then we'll talk about seasonings. I have washed my chicken and um, I have removed the giblets. Now if you like the giblets or if you do a stuffing um, or if you call it dressing um, that kind of a thing then obviously you can incorporate those I actually don't use the giblets um, for eating straight out but what I do is I have a bag that I keep in my freezer um, chicken bones for stock so after this is all said and done and after we've eaten our chicken, um, I will probably use this for a couple of meals. Um, I will save all of those chicken bones and put them into a freezer bag in my freezer. And then I will make a stock from those chicken bones. I also keep all of my veggie scraps. Um, so when I cut the ends off of celery or the ends off of onions or um, peel a carrot that's all free flavor and I do the same thing I put them in a freezer bag and I pop them in the freezer and when I'm ready to make stock I have all of my vegetables there so what I do with my giblets is actually put them right into the stock bag um, and I know some people are a little like whoop, whoop, whoop. yes we don't eat them outright but we do use them for flavor because obviously they're flavorful so um, I have just kind of dried my chicken off. Be careful of chickeny fingers um, and, you know, make sure that you have good kitchen habits here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the little arms, the wings, and I'm going to lift them up and just tuck them back behind the bird. And what that does is it keeps those wings. Oh, you're not. It's a slippery, slidey guy and he's not cooperating with me. There you go. So you tuck those wings back and that keeps the ends, these little guys right here, from burning. Um, and then, um, then you'll have a nicer, um, a nicer crispy crust on there. So um, this is actually a Pampered Chef recipe. I'm gonna alter it just slightly for my family's taste. I happen to have a lemon on hand here. So all I'm gonna do, you can see I'm using one of, one of my favorite knives again. It's my Santoku knife. Um, is I'm going to take lemon and I'm just going to kind of squeeze it a little bit on and a little bit around because I like that really nice light citrusy flavor. Now, do I throw out the rind? Of course I don't. That's free flavor, baby. Pop it inside of the chicken cavity and then it will baste your chicken from the inside as it steams and as it roasts and you will get all those beautiful lemony flavors right in your chicken. So this is my citrus press. Um, I love my citrus press. I use it to make lemonade in the summer, especially if you're only making like a cup or two of lemonade, you know, and you have one lemon or so. Um, and as you can see, it catches all the seeds. So you just kind of pop them into your trash can and then you don't have seeds all over the place, which is another beautiful thing about the citrus press. And also as the um, chicken's juices, you know, runs off, it will um, distribute and go through with this lemon as well. And then we'll have all that flavor in the bottom if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to do a um, sauce or a gravy. 
So now what I'm going to do is I have one of my little prep bowls here and I've got my Chef silicone basting brush. I'm gonna go ahead and right over top of that lemon, I'm going to just baste with a little bit of olive oil. Um, this is to your taste. So what you want, what you're trying to do and the reason that you um, dry off the, the outside of the chicken is because you want it to crisp up. You want it to have that really beautiful, crispy golden brown. Um, if you wanted to use butter, if you're more of a butter fan, that would be fabulous. If you don't have olive oil, um, you can certainly use a different kind of oil if that's your, more your style. And so we're just coating the outside of the chicken with our oil. And I have a season, some seasonings here. Um, what this is is one tablespoon of flour, half teaspoon of uh, let's see if I can get it all right. Half te teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of ground thyme, um, a half teaspoon of salt, um, and one half teaspoon of paprika. Now, um, the recipe actually calls for a half teaspoon of garlic powder as well. I don't use garlic powder, um, not because I don't like it, but it actually has MSG in it, um, and MSG does not sit well with some people. In fact, my husband just can't, can't do it. It keeps him up at night, gives him like a you know racing heart. Um, and who wants to have a beautiful chicken dinner ruined by you know something that doesn't make you feel good? So um, if you wanted to you know substitute regular garlic in there, you could certainly press a couple of loaves of garlic, um, or, and you know or pop a couple of pieces of garlic down into the chicken's cavity. Um, but, you know, it's up to you on how you want to season it and if you can, you know, do garlic salt or, or garlic powder or not. So this is going to go into a 375 degree oven. Um, it will take probably in the realm of 45 to 50 minutes. Um, and I'm going to be preparing some other sides to go with this, but this is going to take the longest to cook. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in right now. My beautiful chicken is in the oven, and I did mention at the beginning of this video that it is fall, and with fall comes all these beautiful vegetables. Um, this is a butternut squash that I am going to be preparing for our dinner tonight to go along with the chicken. Um, butternut squash, if you're not real familiar with it, um, it is super versatile. You can do it in the oven roasted. Um, you can cut it into chunks and roast it that way. Today, I'm actually going to be roasting the whole thing, just cut in half. Um, these are awesome. These uh, are awesome for soups, um, and you can put them into different stews. It's just it, they're such a versatile vegetable, and I think people sometimes forget about squash. It's like a grandma, like oh my grandma used to serve squash. Well, it's because it's good. So um, this is how I'm going to prepare the squash. Um, I am going to take my chef's knife. Isn't that a gorgeous knife? That just, it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> so I'm gonna just, now, when you are working with squash, you have to be careful because squash is a very tough vegetable. So I like to work from the middle and kind of go towards the edge, if that makes sense. Because if you try to cut the entire thing all at once, Sometimes it gets a little tough and you can't get all the way through. So all I did was put my knife in the middle and kind of cut outward. And now what I'm going to do is find that spot again, press down in the middle and just cut down like butter. And isn't it a gorgeous, gorgeous color? It's just so pretty. Um, and then when it, is, um, when it is fully cooked, it is creamy and the, the consistency is just like butter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my large scoop. Um, this I've uh, demonstrated before, um, using this to make your meatballs, using this to make your cookies. Um, anytime you need to scoop, so you can certainly do ice cream with this. Um, I prefer ice cream scoop for ice cream because it's that's what it's made for. But I'm gonna take my large scoop and I'm gonna go ahead and just easily remove the seeds. You might have a hanger on or something. You just kind of put that into your garbage can. Or I suppose if you were feeling, you know, like if you really wanted to get, you know, a little house on the prairie with it, you could certainly save these seeds and make them, um, you know, make uh, the, 
how do you want to call it? Like the little crispy seeds, like the pumpkin seeds that we have around Halloween. I love making pumpkin seeds. I have never really tried um, making different squash seeds, but I suppose it would kind of be the same. Um, they're all kind of in the same family, right? So I have just taken uh, the seeds out of this. And I can move this to the side here. Now, I have another baking dish here. Um, unfortunately, this is not in the catalog. Um, this is a square baker, but what we do have in the catalog right now are rectangular bakers, and they're exactly the same concept of this one. It's just a little bit of a different shape. Obviously, this one is square, and the ones we have in the catalog um, are rectangular. Now, you'll also notice it's glazed on the outside, so it's perfect for putting right on your table. Um, while you're entertaining. Um, and then it is unglazed, so you have that beautiful unglazed stoneware that, that builds up. You can kind of see you can it builds up the season over time. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take my squash and I'm just gonna pop it right in there. And I am going to brush this almost like I did with my chicken, is brush this with a little oil. Again, you could do this with, uh, you know, you could do butter. Um, or a different kind of fat. But basically what I'm trying to do is get this to, to kind of crisp up and roast on the top, get nice and, you know, brown and bubbly. And we are going to obviously be adding seasonings to this. Now, squash is kind of a naturally sweet vegetable. Um, if you've never had it, the different kinds of squash, some of them are more sweet. Um, and then some of them, like spaghetti squash, um, they kind of take on the flavors of whatever you're cooking them with. So a lot of people will use spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash as a noodle substitute and put spaghetti sauce, marinara, Alfredo, something like that if they're, you know, vegetarian. And you can do that and it's a perfect substitute for spaghetti noodles. But butternut squash has a little, it has a very creamy texture and it also is a little sweet. So I like to kind of bring out the sweetness. So what I have done here is um, in my little prep bowl, I have just mixed together some powdered sugar um, I'm sorry, not powdered sugar, brown sugar, hello. Um, now, it doesn't matter if you wanna use dark or light, I actually have used a little bit of both because um, that's what I have. And I also put in here, a little secret ingredient, cinnamon. Um, just a touch, just enough to kind of flavor it. And just like we did with the chicken, we're just gonna kind of cover this. And then as we pull this out, um, we will kind of mix in that beautiful caramelized crust um, from our sugar. And I did put a little bit of salt in there. Um, I use kosher salt, it's up to you if you wanna use table salt or something like that. Um, but I find kosher salt to be a little less, I don't know, salty, <laughs> intrusive salty. Um, I love salt, but I also don't like it when it's, you know, overly salty and then, you know, things, things are not, delicious then. So you can see that I'm, I'm going, well, I'm, you can kind of see I have this on here and this is going to caramelize over the top as it cooks. Um, and then it should come out nice and bubbly and beautiful. And uh, that will be one of our side dishes. And we're also going to do another side dish. So we'll get started on that in just a minute. The last side I am going to be making for this beautiful fall dinner is mashed potatoes because everybody loves mashed potatoes they're like the quintessential comfort food so um all i have done while well, i peeled um four to five medium russet potatoes is what i had on hand so i used my peeler for that um and i'm going to chop this it does not have to be chopped real fine because obviously um they're going to be nice and um soft by the time they are um, mashed. Now this, I'm going to actually be doing these in my quick cooker. How fun is that? So the inside of the quick cooker is right now, there's nothing in there. I'm going to place this right inside so you can see it kind of lifts up whatever is going to be in there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add one cup of water right down into the bottom. You have to have enough cooking liquid when you are cooking in the quick cooker. Otherwise, steam and pressure does not build up 
and your food doesn't get cooked. Now, this is a steamer basket. This steamer basket we do have in the catalog. I'm gonna pop that right down on top so it's sitting right on that little pedestal. And now all I'm going to do is add all of my beautiful potatoes right into there. And then the whole thing with the water, the steamer basket, and the little pedestal is gonna go right over into my quick cooker and I'll show you how to program it. Here is my beautiful quick cooker. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she a pearl? So there are my beautiful potatoes that are going to be mashed potatoes very, very soon. So I'm gonna go ahead. It's gonna sing me a song. Are you ready? Now I'm going to turn this flush and lock it. So when it's uh, this is closed, obviously open is this way. Now I'm gonna also check the top. You see that these icons, the steam icons line up. This is right in place. You'll see that the steam release valve is flush with the top. If I push it, it raises that up and that's steam release. You don't want that right now because you want that steam to build up. And you can also tell that the red plunger is not flush, it is popped down. So there is no, there is no steam and no pressure. Now, I am going to do a custom setting today. We have all these settings, sear, steam, slow cook, whole grains, brown rice, and more over there. We've got tons and tons of them. But today I'm gonna do custom. So what I'm going to do, you see it's confused right now. It's like, what do you want me to do, baby? So I'm gonna press custom and then it gives me a time. Now, the time that it automatically goes to is 30 minutes. I don't want that time. So I'm gonna press time and then I'm going to come over to my little plus and minus and I'm going to set this for 20 minutes. So it's blinking 20, you have it closed. There's no pressure or steam in there yet, but there will be. So all I'm gonna do now is press my start and let her rip. In 20 minutes, I will have beautifully cooked potatoes that I will basically just need to add uh, my accoutrement, like the butter, the cream, the sour cream, whatever it is that you want in your mashed potatoes. So when those are done, We'll look, take a look and, and get them all together. My potatoes are done. You can see that this is three minutes down there. That's just because they've been holding them hot for three minutes. Now, a couple of things. You'll notice that this is still pressurized. So we obviously can't take the top off. That's the easy read, um, you know, so you know that it's pressurized. You'll also feel that it is, hot, it is warm, but not hot to the touch. So you'll never burn your beautiful fingers. Now that over there, that's the steam release valve. That is where the steam comes out. This is where you push to allow the steam to come out. You'll notice that my fingers are never close to that. So if I press this, it'll be loud, but it's not gonna hurt you. Here we go. Isn't that gorgeous? So that is releasing the steam. All of that pressure built up in there. And it'll just take a minute or so to release the steam. Um, and you'll also notice that that red button or that red um, bobber um, as it depressurizes, and once it is fully depressurized, it will go down. So you know that the pressure has been released and it is safe to remove the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that happen. Now, what I can do is, since I'm done with my cycle, I'm just gonna press, this is the cancel button. So that's just gonna put it back to kind of normal. Did you see it? It went down. It went bloop, and now it's down and you can see that this has been depressurized. So it is safe for me to open. So I take this, I turn it and then carefully remove it. There is steam. So make sure that you remove it away from your hand and arm and look at all those beautiful potatoes. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to remove that steamer basket with all of those gorgeous tomato or pot potatoes in it. Um, I'm gonna take out the inner um, vessel and remove the water. And then I'm going to use um, that just to cook up the rest of my potatoes. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, friends, so I have removed the inner vessel. I have drained out the water and I have taken out the little, um, the little thing that was holding up our basket. Now, 
I am just gonna take my steamer basket, which is no longer hot to the touch, but you can see that those potatoes are nice and warm. And I'm gonna pop those right inside. They don't wanna leave, they're having so much fun. Okay, now my potatoes are ready. I am gonna make garlic mashed potatoes because if you don't know me well, then you know, I'm a garlic lover. So this is my garlic press. We've talked about this before. A uh, whole globe of garlic goes right in there. You don't have to take the skin off or anything like that. You put it in, you squeeze it out. You use your tool just like that. Oh look, the Holy Spirit is with me. That came right out. I just popped that right off into my garbage can and I don't have to touch the garlic. I told you I like garlic, I'm doing two cloves because I'm feeling crazy tonight. It's gonna be off the hook and nobody is gonna wanna come over to our house tonight because we're gonna smell like garlic. So there is my garlic press. Look at this little guy trying to escape. Okay, now I'm gonna add just a touch of milk just to kind of make this go um, a little quicker because I have butter to add. So I'm gonna, oh, these are so, <laughs> these are so well cooked. It's taking zero, zero effort for me to mash these up. This is outstanding. Now, I'm just gonna give it a real rough, real rough mash and kind of put it there in the bottom because what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add a stick of butter, bam, right there. Now, I have to melt the butter, so I'm gonna put this back into my quick cooker. I have the lid, um, the other lid for this is if you're doing this slow cooking. So I'm gonna put the lid on this. Okay, so I just put the lid on and I'm gonna come down here. We've got the butter in there, we've got the potatoes. Now I'm just going to press keep warm. And see, it's not counting down right now, it's counting up. So it'll tell me how many minutes it's been on keep warm. So until my chicken is done, until my um, squash is done, I'm gonna go ahead and just let that um, kind of stay warm and of course I am melting that stick of butter so as soon as that stick of butter is melted I will go back in with my potato masher mash it all together um, and then it will be ready to go on the plate okay so I just pulled the chicken and the squash out of the oven you can see oh, it's so lovely very exciting now I have my digital food thermometer um, and right now it's, I checked it just a second ago. It's not 88 degrees in my house, I promise. But it'll actually show you right here, chicken and turkey, 165 degree uh, Fahrenheit. Um, there's one for beef lamb, there's one for fish, there's one for pork. Um, obviously, this is something that you wanna use uh, to make sure that your food is safe. Now, it actually has a magnet here so that you could put it onto your refrigerator or you could stick it right on your stove. This probe uh, folds down so you can uh, you know, store it easily. Um, it's also a bottle opener because who doesn't want a beer? Pretty much all the time, right? And just in case you're Crocodile Dundee, you can slip this thing right on your belt and take it out into the outback. So, all right, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna stick it right into the breast. Um, and you wanna make sure that your, your meat is above 165. Um, this part of the breast is pretty darn well cooked, so that should be wonderful. So the next thing is checking your squash. You don't have to check it with the easy rear, with the digital thermometer. The way that I like to do this is just kind of push a fork into it, and if it doesn't stick, then it's pretty much done, if you can kind of see that. So this will be super easy to scoop out um, and put onto our plates. I will lift this up just a little bit so that you can see all of that beautiful caramelization. You see all the little um, oil and um, all of that sugar and cinnamon. So once we put this on the plate, it'll all be right there. It is so beautiful. So in just a moment, I will get our plates together and show you the finished product. Here it is. Here is the finished product. We got our beautiful garlic mashed potatoes that have been warming for the last couple of minutes in the quick cooker after they were done. Here is our beautiful chicken um, with just a spice rub. You can see that nice, beautiful, crispy crust or crispy skin if you like that. If you don't, you can pull it off, but you don't know what you're missing. And here is our squash. 
Um, and it's got all that cinnamon um, and sugar all caramelized right on the top. This is going to be a lovely fall dinner. I can't wait to dig in. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.